all set up. Let's go and look at this Willy's Jeep that John's mentioned. Hi, John. Right then. Hello, Tom. Are you all right? Yeah, you said you were coming in. How are yeah. you? Yeah. Well, this Willy's Jeep, I thought, after I saw it a few years ago when it was being done up in the garage, I thought, let's see how, how it looks now it's been finished and come back in for a check over. Do you know, it's interesting to see when your car comes back to you after a few years, it's how your workmanship is standing up, how the components are looking, and also with the products and stuff we use. So, um, yeah, rust, pr rust protection and that, and you know, what yeah, state the wiring's work. in, yeah. So this is just coming for service, we'll take it for a test drive a bit later, yeah. check it over, see how it's handling and braking yeah, sure. and stuff, and then we'll go through and, and service it properly. But um, I think this is an original D-Day veteran. Okay, yeah. So it's quite, has it would quite have been green back in the day. It so. was green, yeah, and it had quite historical significance, really. You know, our client wanted to stylize it, and I think he's done a really cool job. I think, I think it looks, looks incredible, full leather interior. So this was actually made by Ford under license. So the Ford element is a Ford engine, is it? No, so Ford literally made... Oh, OK. It's the whole Willys design Jeep made right. under licence by Ford because of the war effort. Oh, OK, yeah, yeah, sure. Because of the war effort. The government just instructed factories, build this design. Yeah. And I suppose Willys got some rights payments on it. But they were just, you know, we had a war to win. So yeah, they yeah. knocked them out as fast as they could. And they were coming over to Europe and everywhere. So okay. we put a nice radio in it, some nice speakers and bits and pieces. And then we hit the radio in the glove box. Ah, okay. And it's waterproof as well. We did the upholstery in leather, and then we also did the um, canvas roof in black as well. So this is the original radio receiver here. Um, this was actually, there was a clay in there for insulation. So we took away the clay, and so we can get the whole chrome look. We turned this in aluminium to replace the clay. So it's actually polished aluminium, and then the rest is chrome. Um, but this is the radio receiving kit. And then obviously we've chromed the shovel and the axe underneath and blacked it all up. So I was really pleased, you know, really pleased with the way it looked when we finished. Uh, we designed a logo, the WZ logo, and um, ended up going along a um, Breitling design look. So the yellow, I think the Jap owned a yellow Breitling watch. Okay. Um, so we had the dials repurposed in yellow, or sorry, re recolored in yellow dials and faces once they were refurbished and the time clock it's a brightling time clock from a starfighter sort of vietnam-esque era um, and that was a nice addition we put that in there and um, i think it's a seven day time clock i'm not sure exactly what it does probably doesn't have too much use in a in a <laughs> land-based vehicle but but it's fun it, it's yeah, it's it a fun great. little talking point it looks yeah, apart yeah. That's the so, thing, isn't it? Uh, tell me a little bit about this um extra bit of support that's on the side here. So after he used the car for a week or two, his, where you sit on the car, there was an issue that when you go around the corner and you're the driver, you can hang on to the steering wheel. Yeah. But your passenger doesn't really have much to hold on to. No, sure. I think he was worried about losing his wife. So Beanie likes his wife. <laughs> <laughs> we put in this little safety bar here. Oh, perfect. And it's piece de resistance when you're driving this and you need to wake up the, the neighbors. <laughs> Just to play the dick. Yeah, yeah, go. Cool. Good start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Always positive. Good start. <laughs> she sounds nice. It's a lovely little willing engine on these. These are fantastic. Um, they're they're so simple, um, but uh, simple agricultural, but. Um, um, they're quite willing as well. When okay. you drive it, it just wants to go. Oh, okay. Yeah, it gives you complete confidence that it is actually going to start. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Mr. about this as well, it's supposed to be obviously for the owner, it's, a, it's supposed to be a fun car, isn't it? On a day like today, you can just take out. Yeah, and just go, yeah, and give go. you confidence it is going to start. Of course, things do happen. And sometimes she doesn't want to start in a car park that we've had in the past. We need the starter motor packed up. Right, okay. <laughs> um, so had a film call on a Sunday morning, John, John. <laughs> so, so um, but normally with the older stuff, you can, you can fix them fairly straightforward. Yeah, yeah. And parts availability is not too bad on these either. So. Also, well, when it's something that you've done and you put together, obviously you know it inside out a bit more, don't you? So you can. Yeah. 
you're perfectly placed to uh, take a look at it. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, the owner lives quite close, so in the local village to us, and um, which is always handy. I'm always on the phone, typically taking phone calls, especially around Goodwood. Oh, okay. <laughs> especially around Go I dread Goodwood. <laughs> John, we're almost there, but it's broken down. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> this is like, get a hammer, <laughs> go to the fuel pump and hit the points. Yeah, yeah. It'll go, trust me. John, there's fuel coming out of the carburetor. Get a hammer, go to the carburetor float bulb and hit it with a hammer. <laughs> Thanks, John, we're going. <laughs> That's probably isn't it, I suppose, as well, when it becomes, there's a forecast of a sunny weekend and you kind of know that everybody with a classic yes. convertible is going to be down and like, yep, yes. this is the weekend for me. <laughs> yeah, sunny weekends, my heart rates through the roof. I do have some indicators here, but um, on the slower, older stuff, it's always sensible just to yeah, look wait, around and, and make hands. And, and wave hand, some arms. Yeah, wave some arms, especially the speed of modern traffic. Yeah, got. yeah. So, um, and obviously you've got lots of space in here, because the, um, you mentioned about the, the uh, you added, you sort of customised the seat and the, for the yeah driver. we did yeah we made quite a lot of modifications to the uh, actually the rear wheel arch so our, our the customer of this car he's, he's a larger gent and he needed more room to get in and out so we modified the the, the architecture and we trimmed the seats for him and everything although it's a historic vehicle with the, the connections with D-Day we've repurposed it and given it a new lease of life and it probably gets more use now than if it was just a, a display vehicle. And, yeah, and, yeah, sure. and it, it's a fun, cool, we made a fun, cool vehicle that on a sunny day in the Cotswolds, this is actually has, you know, instead of jumping in your Ferrari, um, instead of jumping in the Ferrari, um, which may well still do that <laughs> yeah. in a Ferrari. <laughs> This is why we need to test drive them. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, why, sure. You know, and it, it's only, I need to be doing stuff that the cutter's gonna be doing to make sure it's gonna be reliable for him. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, um, so we might need to look at the ignition system or fuel. Yeah. So John, I thought I'd get out of the car. <laughs> Quite, well, but, yeah. So I can show more of it. <laughs> So tell us a little bit about the, um, the history of this, of, of, of Willy Jeeps in general. Well, they were designed in sort of 40, 41. American Army wanted a, 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 a military-based vehicle, or something that was useful, four-wheel drive, overland. And um, they made about 650,000 of these, about 260,000 produced by Ford, 350,000 by Willys themselves. So um, sent all around the world. So. Um, top speed about 65 miles an hour which is plenty fast enough over land um, and in go interestingly I'm sat <laughs> on the petrol tank oh sorry. <laughs> sorry yeah I forgot that I thought it was a perfect moment for you to speed off down the road wait a minute hold there a sec so yes John tell us about the petrol tank the petrol I'm sat on the petrol tank it makes you feel very vulnerable <laughs> very vulnerable it's but uh, we've got high and low range, so we're actually in low range now, hence walking speed, hence you can sort of trundle alongside me. And then we've got the four drivers in and out as well. So, but really basic and just really, really well designed. Um, petrol engine, so yeah, yeah. I know we're supposed to be working, but could we go to the pub? <laughs> it's the right sort of day, isn't it? Yeah. The problem is, well, with these sorts of cars, isn't it? You put into a pub and then. Everybody wants to talk to you about the car you've just pulled in with. <laughs> that is a problem, yeah. So we've got a... On our initial test drive, we've identified it's got a very slight misfire, so we need to pick that up. Which is making our journey a little bit hesitant. Would this have been being driven recently? Would the, would the guy that owns it have not actually driven it for a while? And he's gone to take it out with him suddenly. Can something like a misfire then just kind of rectify itself after a bit of driving? Can a misfire rectify itself? Yeah. Um, <laughs> depending on the cause of the misfire, seldom do problems go away or improve on their own. They tend to get worse. Um, if you've got a small piece of debris somewhere and it goes through the system, then yes. 
if you've got things such as breaking down the ignition system or leads, they tend to get worse. So. Okay. Um, the concern is when a fault goes away on its own, when a fault goes away on its own, what was the fault? Right, yeah, sure. It's, you, you, as an engineer, you're like, oh no, what was it? It's gone. Yeah, yeah, sure. I can't tell the customer what it was or what we should look out for. So yeah. I like things to actually fault to develop and then, then we can cure it yeah. so properly. So. What I find with the modern cars is that you may have a mechanical problem or something developing, then the electrics cut in and turn it off and stop you getting home. They're like, no, that's it. You're going to stop on the side of the road. Where with a truly mechanical car, the fault develops. And if you're a bit clever, you'll be able to bypass or get past the problem and get home and yeah. cure it when you get home. And that, that's the difference is, you know, I bought a Jag, a 10 year old Jag XJ, brilliant car. But as soon as there was a fault, the electrics went into shutdown mode and you were stranded, there was nothing I could do, right. yeah. which is all very embarrassing for um, myself. Yeah, that's what's annoying, especially someone like yourself, isn't it? Whereas you know that it's underneath all those electronics, it's still a combustion engine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it to, is, yeah. It could, could fire and move the wheels and get you home. Yeah, <laughs> the, the principles are the same, four-stroke engine. So, yeah, they're, they're, yeah. Yeah, they're quite right. Um, no, electronics done, the refinement of electrics have allowed far more or for great, greater fuel efficiency, yeah. um, more power, uh, cleverer timing, etc. So they've, they've re refined the basic process to a greater degree. Sure. Um, but the fundamentals are exactly the same. So. Yeah. The great thing is that we've been producing cars for so long. Um, there's so many, so we got such a back catalogue of great classic cars to choose from, you know, from, you know, that you can use as everyday transport and modify and change and make your own. Why do we need to buy new that everyone else has got when, I mean, in, in this yard here, we've got so many things you can choose and personalise and if you're a petrol head and that's your passion, world's your oyster. Perfect. Okay. Lots of chroming on the outside as well, so the chrome, obviously, when they were heading into D-Day, they wouldn't have had chrome fire extinguishers, I presume. I don't think the troops had much say in the stylization of Jeeps, <laughs> as much as they wanted to look cool. <laughs> and uh, I don't think they need much help in being quite cool, judging by uh, their reputation when they came to Blighty. Was it they said? Overpaid, oversexed, and over here, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Much to the that dispensation of uh, our men. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> no, magic. Okay. Off you go then. Right, let's go for a drive. You can pick me up in a minute.